China is undertaking two days of joint military exercises in and around Taiwan, what they call punishment drills in response to separatist acts from the island. But what is actually happening? How severe is this for Taiwan? And could Beijing actually invade the island? All that and more coming up in this video on Piotr's Hot Takes. This is The Global Gambit. So what is actually happening? Well, the Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, has launched a joint military exercise known as Joint Sword 24A. It certainly rolls off the tongue. But the emphasis is to surround the island of Taiwan over the two days, 23rd and 24th of May, and conduct various drills focusing on Taiwanese Strait, the channel of water between Taiwan and mainland China, as well as the island itself and various other islands, including Kimmen, Matsu, Dongying, and Unkao. The emphasis is to focus on reminding Taiwan that it is not a separate entity and that it is eventual a part of China through what the Chinese call unification or the natural rejuvenation of China, of which the Taiwanese eventual unification and unity is a natural part of that process. China's launching was encircling in what it called a strong punishment following the organization of President Lao back in January. On the first day, 49 PLA aircraft were detected and 35 entered what's known as the Air ADIZ, or Taiwan's Air Defense Indication Zone. It's the largest violation of 2024 and a continuation of what we've seen the Chinese doing over various times in the past couple of years. 19 PLA naval warships and up to 16 Coast Guard and other vessels were also tracked operating nearby, with some coming within 24 miles of the island. Now, the emphasis of the Coast Guard was to carry out a, quote, comprehensive law enforcement drill and enter the waters of the islands of Wingkou and Dongying for the first time. Taiwan did respond by deploying what's known as Hing Swing Fei 3 supersonic anti-ship cruise missile systems. And the emphasis of the objectives was to surround the island from both the east and west, uh, and to essentially test the comprehensive capabilities of Taiwan. It was also to emphasize precision strikes on certain key targets, and with the idea of acting to destroy, trap, and blockade uh, the island, were there to be a actual real-time operation un- undertaken. Again, though this is a test, it is the test of the Chinese to see the capabilities of both themselves, the readiness of the Taiwanese, and maybe a bit of a signal to the those in Washington as to this is what we're doing, this is what we're capable of. At the end of the day, diplomatic Signaling is as much about posturing as it is about actual action. To paraphrase Theodore Roosevelt, you can carry a big stick, you don't always need to use it. This comes as a almost inevitability that whenever we see what Beijing considers to be a provocative act, such as Nancy Pelosi's visit a couple of years ago, or a change in leadership after an election, just as we saw in January, then China will respond with a show of force. So what does this mean for Taiwan? Well, in the short to medium term, very little. This is something that the Chinese do whenever there is an election in Taiwan or just fluctuations in leadership and some potentially provocative statements. In the eyes of Beijing, Taiwan is already a part of China, just not fully integrated. Whilst in Taiwan's perspective and in other places, although it's never said out loud, Taiwan is seen as a fully functioning state. And in many ways, it is. It operates with its own economy, it it trades, it has its own relations, albeit not official ones. Indeed, while life on Taiwan continued as normal, with domestic news covering the volatility and fluctuations of the domestic economy, very little, if not as much time, was given to the very significant amount of military operations on and surrounding the island. One of the officials in Taiwan said that China had not actually announced any fly zones, nor had Taiwan observed any large-scale movements of China's ground and rocket forces, which is something you would expect them to do were an actual operation military campaign imminent. That being said, the scope was and is much larger than previous drills that only last two days, and I think is an illustration that China is trying to show how able it is to control the seas and prevent any foreign forces or entity from being able to get even remotely close to Taiwan or its surrounding islands. For me, the political signals here are more significant at this point than the military 
signals, partially because there are, for example, no bombers participating in the flyovers. So does this mean that war is imminent or escalation is imminent? No, I don't think so in this case. Whilst we shouldn't treat this with any lessening in terms of its importance and significance, I don't believe that we're going to see a continued escalation. This is a response from China that was always going to happen at a time when they felt a provocative statement had been made. And frankly, I was surprised that they didn't do a larger military operation in response to the voting in of um, President Lao, who is a continuation of his predecessor, predecessor Cao, who was heavily, heavily pro-independence and against eventual unification. So for the time being, it means that Taiwan continues to operate in this grey zone of geopolitics, international relations, and so on, in that it operates in every way like a sovereign state, that it has its own government, pretty self-sufficient economy, but it has very little international and official recognition. That way, China remains relatively at peace, that Taiwan is not becoming an independent nation, but at the same time, because of its semi-autonomous status, Taiwan can feel like it is an independent country, and ultimately, that appeases other sides as well. Thanks very much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, then do be sure to give it a like, subscribe, leave your comment about how serious you think these drills are, and whether or not something more will come from them. And as always, you can find more things to watch on Taiwan, including an episode on the elections itself and its longer term implications just here. But as always, wish you a peace of mind. Take care.